All right, well, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, welcome everyone that's joining me today uh, for renumbering in Revit. Uh, it's easy, which it is, and it's free. Uh, I'm going to be showcasing the CTC tools uh, software for Revit. Um, tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, I've been in the business for 22 years, uh, multiple job titles, of course, over that period of time and multiple projects. I've been in ATG for 14 months now and just uh, a new career change to bring my expertise to uh, other, other architects around the globe. And uh, if you need assistance with any of your projects and you're even a smaller firm or even a large firm and you need assistance, uh, you can hire myself or any of our other uh, civil, structural, and MEP experts through ATG Team Augmentation. And if you need more information on that, you can contact your ATG sales rep for more information. And if you're not with ATG, of course, you can definitely with your uh, Revit and Autodesk subscriptions, you can definitely go to atgusa.com uh, uh, to, to get more information about how we can help you out with your projects. Uh, today, I am working on a, a BIM box. Uh, it's ex available exclusively from ATG. And today it's a, I'm, I'm working on a Striker M mobile workstation. And uh, this computer uh, is pretty amazing. It's the fastest one I've ever worked on in 22 years. Uh, I-9 processor, 64 gig of RAM. Uh, if you need uh, more information on this, uh, you can definitely visit atgusa.com for that information. Uh, product slash BIMBOX, and we have benchmarks and white paper and uh, a lot of different ways that we can help you uh, speed up your workflows with your company. So today we're going to be talking about the renumbering tool in CTC Project Suite. And it's a, that's a, a downloadable software that plugs into Revit and you actually operate the tool within Revit. And it's just a simple way to renumber rooms, doors, tags, and more. Going to show you how to use that tool today. First, so let's go ahead and just talk a little bit about it. Uh, BIM Project Suite uh, is uh, one of the CTC tools that ATG offers, and the renumbering tool is actually part of that suite. And there are 22 total tools within the BIM Project Suite. Seven of those tools are free tools that, if you download the software, you get a 14 day trial even after the 14 day trial expires, seven of those tools are still free and still uh, able to be used as long as you have that software installed on your uh, computer. And if you would like to see a demo of any of the CTC tool suites, uh, uh, you can just contact your ATG sales representative or atgusa.com to get more information on that. Now the renumbering tool, uh, say it's the easy way because it, it pulls up a window from within Revit and allows you through multiple tabs uh, to renumber rooms, doors, grids, detail numbers, and general mark family tags. And of course, you know, you're probably saying, well, we do that already. Uh, what's gonna make this easier or faster is really what it comes down to because of the ability to uh, sequence your uh, renumbering and auto swap room numbers is where the return on your investment comes from. So you, and again, this is a free tool. So at the beginning, you're not even investing uh, for this. You're just downloading the 14 day trial. Uh, this is one of the tools that I use in a daily base on a daily basis in my workflow with my daily workflow. And so of course, this is something that your draftsman can utilize as well to speed up their workflow as part of the BIM suite. So it is free and you say, well, how do I get it? You can go to atgusa.com, click on products and you'll see a list of all the products that, that we offer. Click on the BIM project suite and download the trial software. And now we also have project suite, a BIM manager suite, a BIM batch suite. We also have Hive, which is a uh, content management system that's in the cloud. And we also have a construction manager project suite and manager suite uh, operate with Revit as well. So if you need any more on any of that, uh, any more information on any of those suites, 
notes, uh, perhaps a demo, uh, of course the trial software, uh, you can contact us at yatg at atgusa.com and uh, we can definitely get you filled in on that. So, of course, let's go ahead and show you what it's all about. I'm going to flip over here to uh, Revit. This is just one of my sample projects that I have open. And uh, up here at the top, uh, I have um, tabs. So when you install the CTC software, you'll have specific tabs for the various uh, plugins. Uh, so this is a CTC BIM batch suite, BIM manager suite, project suite, Hive, and then this tab is actually another tool that we offer called Casework Configurator and Superdoor Configurator. And these tools allow you to create family assemblies for doors and casework. But today, of course, we're looking at the free tool, Renumbering. And as I mentioned previously, uh, you can see all these tools that are available with the BIM Project Suite. These are all available within the 14-day uh, trial period. So if you download, you have full uh, functionality that you can try these out. After the 14-day trial, the lightly colored icons are the free tools that can continue to be used even after the 14-day trial. And the darker colored icons are the, uh, are the subscription-based tools uh, that after the 14 days, you won't be able to use these any longer. And again, if you would like to, if you see any of these uh, tools up here on my taskbar and you say, wow, that sounds kind of cool, occupancy flow analyzer, invisibility advisor, maybe a model checking tool. If you see any of these that interest you or might be help, you know, might ha have uh, help out your firm, definitely contact us for that info and we can set something up. But let's go ahead and take a look at renumbering. I'm gonna go ahead and click on the number or on the tab there in the button and uh, see a couple of tabs pop up. But first let's take a look at the top. Uh, we have our typical options. You can access them through this pull down ribbon or if you have the button selected through your options, uh, you can have access to these help uh, and function buttons here at the top. Um, Options are pretty straightforward to uh, set the size and position of your window, uh, prompt before renumbering, uh, various options available to you uh, through the renumbering tool. Uh, there's also the typical help, which will pull up a PDF user guide. But my favorite part of all the CTC tools is that they all have this video button here at the top of every tool. And if you're using this tool and you get stuck, you're trying to remember, well, how, you know, I saw this demoed, how did it get used? You can click on video and this is going to take you directly to the YouTube channel for CTC tools and directly to the tool uh, video. So if I want to learn about renumbering, I can click on this. It's going to take me to YouTube and uh, show me how to use this tool. Now some of these more in-depth tools such as Schedule Excel, creating spreadsheets in Revit, uh, they'll have a couple more videos associated with them and some of them can be upwards of 40 to 45 minutes long, but that gives you some real uh, depth and training uh, on, on these tools. Uh, support will let you contact support directly and about of course is, is just directly talking about uh, the, the uh, properties of the tool. So again, just straightforward uh, here at the top, the various options for, uh, for support and maintenance. So let's go ahead and take a look. Uh, we'll start with the first tab on the left with rooms. And what I'm gonna do, part of my workflow is, let me go ahead and get out of this for a second, get back to my Revit. Uh, I'm gonna show you the traditional workflow of how this typically works. And if many of you are regular Revit users, uh, you'll recognize this, uh, this process. But what I'm gonna show you is the, the actual through Revit, out of the box OEM workflow that you have to do to, to change these numbers and then the renumbering workflow. So I'm gonna kind of be flipping back and forth between these tools uh, and the Revit window. So traditionally, of course, if we need to change our, uh, our room number, you know, we would come in, uh, we could either select it through here or through the properties uh, browser over here on the side, change the number and hit enter. Now for rooms uh, in Revit, 
it allows you to rename a room a duplicate number. And so it'll give you a warning, but typically as Revit users, we go, okay, yeah, I've seen it. I click it. I know I need to fix that. And so now I've got to go back through uh, to my second floor, presumably with room 200 and renumber that room in that location. Or you're, when you create your room schedule, you're going to have duplicate room 200, you know, 201, whatever that process is that you, you know, you have to set up your schedule. Well, with renumbering, let me just undo, undo. With the renumbering tool, we'll just skip ahead here. Uh, with the renumbering tool, uh, I can specify a prefix. So A, B, C, D, whatever it needs to be, or even a number, uh, whatever your company standard is for renumbering rooms or for numbering rooms, you can set those up. Uh, you could also add separators and suffixes. So in this case, we have an A and B conference room over here. Um, you set that up through set your suffix specification. But in this case, I just want to renumber these rooms. And since I already have 200, let me, uh, Renumber back to, let me go to 300. And you select <coughs> auto swap room number and hit renumber. And you can see this grays out and I'm still here in Revit in the background. And I can click on those and it's doing that because I have it somewhere else because uh, I didn't undo it. Uh, and then you can go back through and renumber those just by clicking on the room. So if I hit escape on that and go back to 100, let's say, I can then renumber those rooms back. And then remember we had a 102A, 102B. So I can hit cancel on that, 102A. 102B, whatever that process may be for your firm to renumber your rooms. So again, super easy, very quick, especially if you have to say, renumber a whole floor, the client comes back, maybe it's a military contract and the typically the, you know, the government contracts will set up their uh, room numbering systems different according to their standards. And so you've already modeled it and now you've got to go back through and renumbering uh, renumber everything for the owner. Uh, this makes it super easy to do that. So then the next thing on the list is doors. And of course, doors works in a similar fashion. And that is, you know, you would come in 102, or if I change that to 200, I can still change those manually. But again, it's going to have duplicate marks and uh, and all Revit is going to do is warn me about that, uh, but, but still allow me to make that change. With the CTC renumbering for doors, works the same way, but it's a little bit different too in that it gives you another option that I can either do sequence-based numbering. So I know uh, some architecture firms will have all their doors throughout a whole project numbered sequentially from one to 200 or however many doors you have. But I've also worked at multiple firms as well that prefer room-based numbering. So the uh, door associated with that room is that number, of course. So this is the pretty much the, the, the standard that I'm familiar with. So I'm gonna show you this example because again, you're gonna have this ability to auto swap that door number uh, as the room numbers change. So let's go ahead and just do a two room renumber because my rooms change. So that's going to change that to a 102A or a 102B. Um, if I want to specify uh, no suffix, then I can take that out, two room, and it's just going to uh, renumber. Whoop. I forgot to swap that back out.
and I want to get rid of that suffix. Oh, it's because my room number has that association. So it's picking that up automatically. Let me go back to my rooms. Let's do this a little different here. Going to renumber these 200. Yes, that's fine. Duplicate. Yes, that's fine. 202, 203. Cancel. Go to my doors. Uh, get rid of the suffix. Auto swap. And now it's going to just renumber those doors because my room numbers don't have that A, B suffix. So it's going to be a 202, 203. Uh, if I want to uh, add a decimal, I know many firms use this numbering convention that we can do it that way. Now you notice it didn't change it because there's only one door. But what happens if I add an extra door? between the two offices, or conference rooms, excuse me. And then I'm going to add a door tag. And then let's go ahead and do the renumbering again now. Doors, room-based, with my suffix, auto swap, move that a little bit, and then I can select my door. Yes, yes. It's picking up my previous auto numbering, so let's do this again here. There you go. So one and two renumbers those, room, those rooms and doors. And again, if this room number changes, uh, you just have to, I'm going to just show you an example. Uh, you just run the, run the software again and, and click the doors and renumber those. Uh, definitely very uh, much more efficient than the traditional sense of having to uh, double click and modify or even try to uh, change those via the property window. So again, very straightforward door renumbering. Let's go ahead and take a look at grids. Uh, this is actually probably the one I use the most and it's one of my favorite just because of the pain typically associated with renumbering grids. So you know architects we uh, we lay out our design we place the grids where we think they need to be uh, and we just know you know we number them according to uh, or label them according to our company standard and we'll send them to structural and then structural does their magic and they work on it. But traditionally structural has a set method of uh, labeling and numbering grids. And typically they're different from the way architects like to do it, whether it be uh, you know left to right, up to down, whatever, whatever the reason we receive back our structural model and the grids are different. And in order to change the grids, you can't, you can't uh, just rename it A. This is one of the, the items in Revit that will not allow you to have duplicate grid, you know, duplicate grid names. It has to be a unique name. So then architects play this game of, well, now we've got to, you know, put some kind of a weird number or letter or something at the end of it. So then when we get to the end, we can go back through and renumber these A, B, C, D, et cetera, et cetera. So it gets to be kind of a lengthy process, especially if you have a very large project with more than, you know, this has got about 20 grids on it. Some of the larger projects, of course, you could be talking upwards of 100 grids that you're going to have to renumber and play this uh, renumbering game with. But with the renumbering tool, uh, in the time I've taken to talk about it, I can come in here, select my sequence to start, hit renumber, click on those, and it looks like I missed click somewhere. So I can start this over again. Yeah, 
<laughs> I keep clicking the wrong thing, but you get the idea. It's it, the ease at which you can. There we go. Be a little bit more careful with my clicks. Uh, the ease at which you can uh, re-letter those or even renumber is amazing uh, because all you gotta do is click on it. And as you can see, what I'm doing is I'm clicking the primary grids. And now I'm gonna go back through and you kind of have to, when you have the decimal points, you kind of have to be a little bit more specific uh, with uh, what you're gonna be uh, sequencing. So in this case, if it was a, uh, you know, a one point, whoop, there we go you know, 1.1, 1.2, however that numbering needs to be modified to. And of course, in this case, it might be just as easy to, uh, you know, do the, the 4.2, just do that manually, uh, depending on the amount of grids you have to renumber. So again, very easy to use, but a, a great time saver for grid numbering, grid renumbering. So let's go ahead and take a look at uh, detail numbers. Now this is a great tool as well. Uh, and and it, this does uh, speed up your workflow because, let me take a sip. What inevitably happens is that you will uh, have a draftsman putting views on a sheet uh, I know part of our uh, workflow at some of the firms I've worked at is, you know, let's cut our sections, let's create our elevations, drag and drop them on sheets. So we know, uh, so we can generate and know what uh, views we need to create and, and work on in detail. So those will just get placed all over the, you know, all over the sheet, no particular order, much like this is, you know, we have numbers all over four, seven, six, uh, one, nine, five. So, these are all placed in various locations because we know we just want to create the view and then we want to spend time later going back and working in those specific views. And that way we know we're not going to be missing any of our uh, uh, needed sections and details for construction drawings. Well, what always happens, and this has been a, a conversation throughout the uh, ages with architects is how do we how do we label our sheets do we start bottom right to left and work our way up or do we start at the top left to right and go down uh, of course in uh, uh, other countries that uh, list their you know uh, numerically uh, opposite of what the US does with their numbering system. There's a lot of variation and to have to go in, uh, and I might also add as well military, uh, some military contracts uh, require uh, letters instead of numbers. So specific ways that they want their sheets labeled. So there's a lot of variation in how this needs to happen. And to uh, have this come up to where if you need to uh, either uh, click on it and change the, you know, change the, uh, the number through the properties uh, detail number is one way to do that. You can also kind of get crafty here and try to uh, click on, you know, the specific number and change it in that location. There's a lot of variation on a workflow to make that happen, but all of it's time consuming because you're having to deal with each individual view on multiple sheets and you may have a hundred sheet project where you're having to, you know, re-letter and renumber 20 pages of details. With the renumbering tool and the, it's, it's gonna go faster than the time I've talked about it. I select sequence start with one auto swap that detail number. And let me zoom in a little bit so you can kind of see this happen. Uh, you just click on the view and it automatically, or on the detail, and it automatically swaps those numbers out to the number I need it to be. Or as, uh, as I just spoke about, maybe it's a military project. We need to use uh, letters. We can go back in and A, B, S, that. A, B, C, D, or change the direction. You know, whatever, whatever, whatever variation needs to happen 
to renumber that sheet. Again, super easy as all these four tools have been on this one uh, tool. Uh, lastly, and I really don't go into super depth on this because this is just a general mark parameter. So whereas doors are marks, uh, you know, windows are marks, there's various types of mark parameters and, and these relate to the instance of a family works the same way. You swap out the number, select your sequence, prefix, separator, and suffix that you need to change. Um, and that's really it. And like I said, that is a free tool offered through uh, the CTC BIM suite, BIM project suite. Uh, I, I can't open it for questions. So if anybody has any questions on that particular tool, uh, I can definitely uh, answer any questions. Uh, can you make a general look like this? Uh, so it's going to depend on your, uh, on your tag, on your mark tag. But basically what you would do is uh, that you would have to specify your sequence. So that's a great question and I'll have to check into that because you're actually trying to do multiple separators from the looks of it. I don't know if everybody can see the chat from Josh, but he's asking for an XXX, uh, something like this. I don't think you would be able to add that many separators to it uh, because of the fact that, uh, okay, so you're talking, and now he's uh, clarifying a specification um, tag. And I think you would have to do your, because you've got it separated into four. I don't know if you could do four uh, because you could set up the zero, zero, five, five as a prefix. Uh, and of course, you're actually you have uh, you have letters in there too. So if I type HVAC, then the next one is probably going to be a HVAD. You know, because it's coming at it from a numerical and alphabetical sense of changing those values. Uh, so I don't think it would do that. Uh, but what you could probably do is if you created a uh, if you created a mark tag that made the HVAC and the VAV is static, but maybe the 0105 was the number that changed, that was the variable number, uh, that would probably be the way I would handle it. So for example, and if anybody can't see their chat since I'm talking here, uh, he typed in this variable. Well, actually here, let me just do this. I'll just drag it over. Uh, I don't think this would, I, I should say, I don't, it's not going to work because of the way this operates in numbers. Uh, but what you could probably do is create your parameter tag, your tag, these would be static. Uh, this, this value would be a static and this would be the variable that changes because then it's a number that this, this program can renumber. Uh, then that would probably work better. Uh, how do you pick which tag is being changed for general? It would work the same way. Uh, so if I was uh, in, um, you know, my plan view and I had uh, something tagged and I apologize, I don't have, uh, I don't use marks in this project. I need to load some so I can kind of show you what I'm talking about, but it would work the same way as with doors because do this is a mark. Uh, but it's for doors. So it's going to be specific to the family. So if I have a, a furniture uh, mark that specifies the furniture and these are numbers, maybe I'm creating a furniture schedule and this is zero one, this is zero two, then I can mark those. And uh, as such with that tag, with that mark tag, and then it works the same way. As long as it's a sequence that I can uh, use with this program to uh, go to the next sequence, then it just auto swaps that marked value. So that would help to create a, like it says, a family instance to create a furniture schedule uh, would be very helpful so you can uh, reorganize those and swap those around. Uh, 
And really, uh, whoop, let me go back. I didn't mean to jump out of there. Uh, again, you can download this and try the 14 day trial and try it. See what different variations you can come up with uh, using the renumbering tool. Plus you can select, you know, try out some of these other uh, free tools uh, that come with the BIM, lit, the BIM project suite um, for sure. Uh, any other questions on renumbering? Does it work on the current level or does it apply model wide? Well, it depends on, uh, that's a good question, and it really depends on what you're renumbering. So uh, in this case with the grids, the grids, of course, uh, extend through all the levels. So those are going to be, you know, project wide on each level. Uh, the doors themselves are, of course, only showing on this particular level. But, uh, you know, with this tool, you can flip between the various levels uh, and renumber uh, on the various levels as you click. Uh, because even if I use it here, for example, let me go back to my. Uh, this example that we were using and I was renumbering and if you're in the tool and you're renumbering those doors then I can still if my plan is open so I had presentation floor two open uh, then I can actually go in and renumber those as well just by flipping to the view because I'm still in the program um, now, in the sense of when I'm replacing a number, uh, such as where it auto replaces and substitute auto swaps that number, then technically it is working on multiple levels because it's taking that other door from floor 200 and making it, you know, swapping it with my first floor doors. So in that sense, it does work on multiple levels, uh, but you still have to click on it in order to make that work. Uh, you know, to make it swap those numbers out, you have to have that floor view open, switch to it, and then, you know, click on the doors to, to swap those out. Good questions. Very good questions. All right. Well, uh, I appreciate uh, everyone dropping in on this today. It is a very quick tool. Uh, in short, I could also, I mean, I could always talk about another tool if you guys want to see any of these other free tools that I could jump on real quick. Uh, quick Select is another one that I use in my daily workflow. Uh, that is one of the free tools with, uh, with the BIM suite. And it's a little bit more in depth, uh, a little bit more in depth uh, filter and search tool for Revit because the traditional, you know, the traditional of course with Revit is the find and replace, lets you select a few things, replace, you know, replace things, uh, items, uh, gives you a few options on how you want to search. But with the quick select tool, I actually have a lot more control over it because I can apply filters, uh, categories. If I'm looking for a specific, let's say in this case, I want to look for a door, I can actually search by specific parameters. So width, and then I can specify what kind of width I want to look for, the operator. And then, and then because this is, uh, this filter is linked to the specific categories I'm searching through, it'll then come up with some values uh, on those specific items that I'm searching. So uh, let's say I want to look for a specific 3.0 door that maybe we need to swap out. I know it's 3.0, uh, but I don't know where it's located in my project. I can update my project set or selection set, and it's going to show me all the categories of my doors. Um, and then you can see over here, it's actually highlighted the doors that are selected. Um, I can specify a specific door and go directly to that door and, and, and uh, do whatever I need to do to find it you know, or to, you know, to modify it. This is just a select and filter find. Very cool free tool and I use it a lot to find stuff in my project. Uh, let's see, we had, uh, let me pull my chat window back up. Uh, CTC room manager tool, something that will delete rooms not used or deleted from project. Uh, that's a good question. I think it would, 
I mean, delete rooms not used or deleted from project. I mean, it, trying to think project cleaner is under our BIM manager. Does, this is a little bit more robust purge tool, but I don't think it does rooms. This just does views, filters, sheets. I mean, to me, at least as an architect, typically a room management, uh, you know, is going to be kind of a project manager level uh, job description that, you know, as stuff gets added and deleted. I mean, you can sort. Uh, you can sort your schedules to show rooms that aren't placed in the project. I mean, that's the way I've done it previously is to just use my room schedule and sh sort for rooms not in the, pro you know, not, not actually that are in the schedule, but not actually located in the project. Um, I really don't have a tool though that deletes rooms. Um, somebody said they wanted to see BIM list and BIM list admin. So BIM list admin and BIM list browser uh, are both uh, tools that these are two free tools that allow you to manage your BIM uh, content. And this will uh, let your BIM manager in your company organize your library. So you basically would create a database, upload your families. Now this is just a small version. I haven't uploaded my whole library, but it kind of shows you how it breaks down this content, creates a database that your BIM manager th then can then uh, uh, manage and, and track the content, uh, upload new content and update it as it changes. So this is an admin side of it. Once you have that content created as a, uh, as a, uh, sorry, as a, uh, I lost my train of thought, as a database, then you can load that database and each of your individual draftsmen that have these free tools on their computer uh, can then access that BIM list through the browser and it allows you to uh, see your whole library. Uh, you can group it. Your BIM manager can have that content grouped. They can search. And then the cool thing, the reason this is different from your typical component in Revit, you know, hey, scroll down, pull up my ribbon, uh, load my component. The difference is, is that with this tool, I can actually specify just the individual door. So if I want a double fixed frame, I don't have to load every single one of these uh, types into my project. I can actually just select the specific pro you know type that I want. So it actually keeps your uh, keeps your size down on your file. Now I do like to kind of go into a little bit more explanation of these two tools. They are free. You guys can use them. Download the trial. But what these tools have really developed into is Hive. And this is a, a content management system uh, that allows your BIM manager to, with a little bit more control, you can actually create user groups, control who has content, who has access to specific content, what you're gonna do with it. Uh, it does Revit files, but it also does DWGs, uh, uh, PDFs, images, any kind of content that you need to put on a server and control, Hive does that. It also allows you to see these families in a little bit more detail. Uh, you can, let me jump back to my home screen again. These are all projects created. I can create specific user groups that have access to these specific folders. And then the families that pop up in there, you can search by filters, uh, only Revit content specifically, uh, whatever you're looking for that's in that project. Now for each particular project, your project manager may upload not only Revit families, but we may upload PDFs relevant to the uh, specifications for these projects, maybe cut sheets or anything like that. You can actually link those specifically to, uh, to the specific family's uh, content. You can also get specific details on the family that you've selected. 
uh, you can see uh, all the all the parameters within it. And the cool thing I like about it too is as a BIM manager, your users can actually rate these. And so they can leave comments, four star, five star, this is awesome. Uh, hey, we're having some issues with it. You can, uh, these are where you attach your cut sheets for that specific ice and water dispenser. Uh, so it's really invaluable for managing that content. Now, this is just scratching the surface because the other cool thing I love about this is that because I'm still in Revit, I'm still working in Revit in my background, when I get ready to load one of these, all I gotta do, I can double click on it or I can just left click load and it's gonna load that specific family. I go back here in my background and it places it. So the, 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 the current uh, architectural type workflow that would go with this software would be that your company template would have almost zero content in it. And so all your content would actually be in the cloud in Hive. Uh, the other thing I like to mention is that I really like is that you can uh, have DWG uh, files on here, but those DWGs can be imported into Revit as a, uh, as a, uh, well, let me get out of here, I'll clear my filter because I had selected only Revit content. You can actually uh, insert those as views into your project. So if you have, you know, like uh, Smagna details, flashing head seal, tip, typical DWGs, uh, what you would do is you would use uh, your um, you would use your detail link and you can process those DWGs and insert into the, your uh, Revit project and actually save those as views in your project and then using the Hive tool you can actually uh, create your lot your BIM manager could create your library and add add content add Revit project elements from the current project that's open and it's going to create a list of all the Revit elements in my project that I could create a family out of so it's like an automatic family creation wall type standards DWGs, curtain walls, stuff that you typically don't see created as a family, uh, this Hive allows you to extract that information from your project and create families. Again, this is just kind of scratching the surface on Hive, uh, and I kind of wanted to touch on that because it, it really connects with, uh, it connects with the, the BIM list and BIM list admin, which are two of the free tools. Um, if you'd like a, a, a more in-depth demo on Hive, uh, definitely contact us at atgusa.com. Uh, we can, we can uh, go into a little bit more detail uh, with that as well, with Hive or any of the tools that we have available. Let me go ahead and I'm going to close this because the other thing that Hive does, this is new, they just had a 2021 update. Um, uh, or I'm sorry, not con content management's with the project, but it also does uh, project management. So you can actually take uh, projects, load them to the Hive dashboard, and then you can really start using data analytics to break down your projects and look at the project summary, uh, get views. Uh, so let's select one of these projects that have been uploaded. Uh, now these aren't on the, now your projects aren't on the cloud. This is just being linked into the Hive data analysis that it's taking your project and it analyzes it and kind of comes back with uh, some analytics on summary. How long does it take to load the project? How many warnings do you have? Uh, you can also break down uh, users and who's accessing it, uh, any issues you've had with uh, performance of the model. Um, there's, and of course, this is new with 2021, so there's some new features still being kind of worked on, performance detail, but you can see I've got model warnings on my projects. So this is really a high level BIM manager, project manager, data analytics on specific projects that you have linked 
into Hive. Now with content, you can also break down the data analytics on your content. So whoever's used Hive can actually come in and uh, your BIM manager can kind of see, well, what's the, you know, what's everybody looking for? What are the most things people are looking for? Searches by term, how many searches there's been, uh, what kind of content you have on, a pro on the projects that are linked in. So I can select some of these projects that are linked and it's gonna kind of come back with some different version, you know, different data uh, as it regards to the Revit content in my projects. And then of course tags, all your various tags for your families that you set up in Hive. Again, this is, I'm just kind of giving you, filling up your time. I'm wanting to make good use of your guys' time. Uh, uh, and I think that's about it for today. If you guys uh, have any uh, questions, you would like to see some more demos on these uh, different suites, uh, definitely contact us at atgusa.com. Uh, we can uh, provide you some more information. Uh, and again, as I said earlier, if you uh, stay in the loop with us on LinkedIn and YouTube, uh, make sure you subscribe to those. You can learn about all the uh, latest uh, webinars that are coming up. And uh, that's it. I do appreciate everyone's time today. And I hope you have a, a great uh, weekend. And thank you for your time.